All right. Is everybody ready? Sure. So I made the promise. I said today is straightforward and easy. It is, but the well, one of the proofs is not. Just don't panic on the proofs. I'll show you the steps because I do have to prove it. But when you get to the formula, it ain't that big of a deal. And theoretically, you've had this class before in algebra two. Let's see if that's true or not. Thank you. No. What is that thing? Um, uh, it's got to be a cone or something like that. It's a, it's a, 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 or a pyramid. Those are all about a third. All right. Arab triangles. Hey, welcome to fifth grade when you first learn Arab triangle, right? So if we're in pre calc, so you get a pre calc form. Technically, you learned it last year. There's going to be two formulas that calculate Arab triangle. And I already know how to calculate Arab triangle. Arab triangle is. One, uh, base times height divided by two, one half base times height. All of that you already know, right? So why do we need a new formula? Well, what if they don't give you the height? Right? So these are going to be formulas for if you don't know the height. Okay? So uh, the base of a triangle times its height divided by two ends up being the... Now, I'm not proving that one because we proved it before in geometry. But our book isn't satisfied with the letter A. I don't know why. They want to use the letter K. So if you see the letter K, they're using K for area. Sounds crazy. And I'll tell you why, because most of the triangles they use, most of the triangles that you've been doing is called triangle ABC. So if I say A is equal to this, well, A is an angle of the triangle, which is why I assume that they're using K for that, okay? So just don't be thrown. All the area formulas I'm going to give you today start off with a capital letter K. It's just area. You want to put A, and you don't confuse it with the A angle that's in your triangle, fine. All right, so here's what you just told me, one half base times height or base times height divided by two. Yay. Today's class, we erase the heights. So we're going to calculate area when we don't know the height. Okay. Why do we need it? Because if you don't have the height, look, I don't have the height. How am I going to calculate the area? Okay. You're going to get two flavors of this, two different formulas for each flavor. Okay. Flavor number one, it's right there in front of me. Hey, pay attention. Flavor number one, guess what I'm going to hand you? I'm going to hand you SAS, right? Flavor number two, we got a new formula for this. Flavor number two, SSS. SSS. Those are the only two flavors we get. We have no AAS or something like that. But we will get a flavor for SSS. It's a formula. It's about this long, right? It's not complicated. And we're going to get a formula for SAS. Involves a little bit of tree, okay? All right. So we're going to start off with SAS. I got to prove the prove it to you first, okay? It's a pretty easy proof. Other one, SSS, not easy proof. I'm going to start off with this. Because I already know that is the area of this triangle. You just don't know what the height is. So if I don't know what the height is, well, then i got to make the height. So I'm going to make the height right there. I'm going to drop a perpendicular straight down to side B, make it perpendicular. It, therefore, it's the height. Well, I can tell you something about angle C now. It's what? He's already jumping ahead, right? But he's correct. Yes, we did that yesterday or the day before when we proved the law of cosines, or it's law of sine, I forget which. Okay, cool. So this says if you see the letter H, so I see the letter H in my initial formula, so now I can get rid of the H. So I get rid of the H, you're like, ew, unfortunately, that's the formula for SAS. Okay, so there you go. Area is now equal to one half times two sides and the sign of the included angle. It must be the, but they're going to give you SAF, so it will be the included angle. Okay? So that's our new formula. Write that one down. <coughs> K for area, because they don't want to use A, because of the, the, the uh, notice here on the right side, that vertice would be capital, or the angle would be capital A. That's why they don't want to use A. Okay. All 
All right. So clearly you still need a calculator for this one because it's trig. I need two sides in the included angle. It's got to be SAS for this to work. Um, if they gave you two of the other or what, one of the other one of the other angles, like if they gave you this angle, this angle, I could still make it into an SAS, right? If they gave you this angle, this angle, add a two, subtract the 180 to get angle C. So it doesn't technically have to be SAS, but you have to, to use the formula, you have to have two sides in the included angle. Did I confuse anybody on that? Okay. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We're not going to do 16 of these, you know, because it's just plugging in numbers into a formula into your calculator, right? Uh, for those who don't like fractions, well, then use this formula right here. AB times sine of C. I, I, I would prefer if you thought about this as the two uh, sides and the included angle. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the book will also give you the formula for any one of the angles. So I will leave it to you whether you want to write the other two down. Like I said, I, re I prefer you remember this as two of the sides of the included angle are the values you need. When you take those two sides, multiply them together, multiply by the sine of the included angle, and then divide by two. So yes, we have formal definition of all three um, angles or all three sides in every single possible combination. Make sense? Or do I need to wait for you to copy down? Uh, this is in the book too as well. In the back of the book? No, no, in the chapter itself. Oh, so I have to look for it. You also have to breathe and eat. Actually, I'm gonna write it in the back of the book. It might be in the back. Actually, I don't know. I, I law of law of sines and cosines is. I don't know if this area is or not. It might be back there. I've never actually looked for them. I see area of a triangle. They just give me one half base times height. So it does not appear to be back there. Okay. We get a formula for SAS, we get a formula for SSS. Uh, the formula for SSS, no trig involved, no trig involved. This one, well, we got a sign or something. All right, Luke, you good? Yeah. All right. Uh, and the point I was trying to make is that, hey, look, every one of these three examples uses all three potential letters, an A, B, and a C, an A, B, and a C, A, B, and C. But it must be two sides in the included angle. All right. Can I use this formula, yes or no? How do you know? It's SAS, all right? So you can write the formula down or just remember these are the two numbers you multiply times the sine of that angle, the included angle, all divided by two. I'm not even going to look at the formula. I'm just going to take the two numbers, but you have to have an SAS. Take the two numbers, I'm going to multiply them together times by the sine of that number. Hey, look, it's a unit circle one. Anybody know? Sine is y, 30 degrees. Y is, well, it's either half or root three over two. You got 50 50 chance. Uh, six times uh, eight is 48, half of 48 is 24, and it's a half, and half of 24 is 12. Now it is area, so we must uh, have square units. I, I haven't looked at the homework in a while. I don't know if they give you units or not, but if they don't give you units, you got to put square units because you're doing area times volume. We're not doing volume, but you give volume cubic units. There's an SAT thing. That would be a cheap question if they had 12 and then right next to it, they had 12 square units. That would be a cheap question. I was wrong. I've been saying all along, I thought today, this year was the last year they were going to do the uh, paper pencil uh, SAT, but they're saying it's going to be computer. This year? Yeah. Oh, no. That's what Miss Hoffman said. You still can use your calculator, though. Those are called pencils, Julia. I like putting in the bubble, like the actual thing that you're reading and then understanding here. Don't they have like a button you can press to highlight things? I'm with you. I would much rather take a, a pen, paper pencil. Blame the state of Colorado. All right. Hey, what's different? 
Okay, so I'll just say in this section right here, they're either going to give you three sides or they're going to give you two sides. I mean, you can make an argument, is this the included angle? But since it's the area and it's two of the sides and the angle they don't give you is A or B, remember A and B will be opposite those two sides, then whatever that is, as long as it's not these two letters right here, A and B, it's got to be the included angle, okay? So in reality... I think this is even easier because you can just look at, hey, there's not three sides. It must be SAS, right? I'm not going to give you one where it's not SAS or SSS. So I multiply the two numbers together. Divide by two, that gives me six. So it's six times the sine of 50. Nothing challenging there. Anybody? I said today was easy. I got 4.5. What I got too. Yay, SAS. Do you remember this from last year or no? Okay, then you're not going to remember the next one. Well, what did I say about the next one? No trig. I'm going to spend five minutes on a proof. There's no trig involved in the formula, but there's plenty of trig involved in the the um, proof. Remember, I have a cold. Okay. All right. Pretty slick. All right. Here we go. Take a deep breath. For those of you that don't like proofs and think about kittens. All right. For the rest of you, I'll show you where the magic comes from. Okay. So this is going to be the SSS. Clearly, they got to give you Three sides. Okay. Hey, we now have two formulas for area. We have this formula for if they have the height. We have this formula for if I don't have the height, but I have uh, SA, SAS. Cool. All right. Uh, remember this one. We're going to come back to it a long time from now, like four slides from now. Okay. So how do you calculate the area if you're a triangle? And this is very, very useful. And boy, it's really sweet, right? It's just a really hard proof. All right. Uh, easy outcome. So they're going to give you the three sides, right? So they're going to give you A, B, and C. Uh, we know from the law of cosines, I'm picking suspiciously C, right? Uh, I could have picked any one of them. So uh, we know from the law of cosines, C squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared minus two times those two sides multiplied together times the cosine of C. That's my starting point. I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. Uh, let's see. I moved the minus two AB cosine C to the left. And then I will move the C squared to the right. See what I did? Okay, just a little bit of algebra. Okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 2AB from the left side. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and then from out of nowhere, right, I'm going to throw in the half angle formula, right? The half angle formula for a cosine is this, right? Uh, we know that our triangle is in, what did we say at the start of the chapter, where are we always going to put our triangle? First quadrant, because it's everything's got to be positive. Remember, for a triangle, sides can't be negative. So we're going to put it in a quadrant. So I already know that this plus or minus must be, it's got to be a plus, right? Cool. All right. Now, for some reason, I don't like that square root. So not only do I know it's plus, I'm going to square both sides, because I don't like the square root. So I'm going to get cosine squared of, it's half angle, C over 2. And then I just get rid of the square root symbol. See what I did? All right, you see that cosine C? Mm -hmm. It says cosine C right there. Mm -hmm. So I can take this hot mess right here, probably I'm touching what's on the right, and plug it into where it says cosine C on the left. So I'm gonna do that. Ew. All right, you got options. What do you wanna do? No, sorry. Copy dot clip, he said. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You're making cute. What? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good. Okay. Um, no, that's how I feel. That's he's going to. said, "Let's do a copy dot flip. We could do that first, or we could common denominators. I chose well the book. This is from the book. Uh, the book chooses common denominators. So one would have to be two AB over two AB. So I've added that to the top. I've added a two AB. Now I'll do a copy dot flip with the two. So multiply everything by half. So that two AB turns to four AB, okay? <laughs> now I need a new piece of paper. 
Well, I'm seeing a one. Uh, I got this right here. That's where I started this whole long list of equal signs. And then I wound up over here. So I'm going to take those two things in blue, rewrite them. Okay. What happened to the one? One we turned into 2AB over 2AB. So add that here and then common denominator is 2AB. Okay. All right. Now what? Uh, I'm going to put parentheses suspiciously around the first three terms at the top. What do you notice? Right. Back to that. You can back to that, right? You can so, take out AB. So that would be A plus B squared, right? Because mm -hmm. the middle what? term is 2AB. And now this one, a little bit harder to see. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? If I wrote X squared minus 9, do you see it now? Is this factorable? X squared minus 9? Yes. X plus 3, X minus 9. So if the first thing is squared and the last thing is squared, then you can factor it. Hey, look, the first thing is squared, except it's a binomial. The last thing is squared. So I could write that as this plus C and this minus C. That's what I did. Okay? All right. Now, if you thought that wasn't ugly enough, do you remember use substitution from last year? I don't know if we've done it this year yet. Use substitution. Use substitution is this thing where you got a big hot mess. You're like, I don't want a big hot mess. Let's make my life easier. Let's do something called use substitution. So you take a portion of it, you set it equal to U, and you substitute U in to make your life easier. So the magic is U substitution. So I'm going to suspiciously, instead of U, they use an S. I'm going to let S equal this right here. So anywhere I see this, I can write S. Well, it's right here. Except this says 1 half. So maybe, maybe if I multiply both sides by 2... So if I see A plus B plus C, I can write 2S. Hey, look, A plus B plus C, I can write 2S. That's my U substitution. This one's harder to see. I'll show it to you after I write this. Wait, you just need to make that decision? You can. It's a U substitution, right? Eventually, you got to substitute back. But for right now, we can do it. You use a U substitution when you think it'll make the algebra a little bit easier. Okay. This one right here needs the explanation. Why is 2s or 2 parentheses s minus c equal to that right there? Well, if you distribute the 2 back in, you get 2s minus 2c. But we said 2s is equal to a plus b plus c, and c minus 2c is minus c. So that's where that came from. Okay. All right. Good? All right. Sure. All right. Um, Let's see, what did I do right here? Well, notice everything has a 2 in it, so I can factor out a 2. So I get that. Oh, no sheet paper. How is it AD? It should be 2AD. Because it's a mistake? Good job. Now it's right. Where'd my 2 go? Dang. Oh, no. no I'm right, you're wrong. Two. I'm right, you're wrong. There's two of them. Thank you, Presley. Two times two is four. Oh. Uh, I almost thought there was a mistake there. All right. Thank you, Presley. All right. Uh, so we this is where we're at right now. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to show this portion of it because it would add another five minutes to it. But we did that to cosine. I chose the half angle for cosine. I could have chosen half angle for if I did half angle for sine, this is the only magic that I will actually show in the proof. It's on page 55. Turns out that the half angle of, we stop talking, half angle sine turns into this. Okay? Cool. So I've done a whole lot of stuff and nobody knows where we're going, right? Yeah. All right. So I did a whole lot of stuff and I get this result in blue and this result in blue. Okay. So what? Back to where we started. What we started was, I said, remember this, right? So this says K for every triangle is equal to one half AB times sine of C. Okay, I said this was bad. We're not done yet. We had a double angle formula. And a double angle formula says if you have the sine of double theta, you can write this. Well, I got the sine of half of theta. So if I double that, I'm doubling a half, I get back to theta. It's like I'm combining a half angle with a double angle. They cancel each other out. So I could rewrite this as this. I mean, this is the same. If I double this, I get back to theta. Okay, cool. 
Now, why did I do that? This is, we're getting close to the end here. It's because look in blue here what it says. It says I need sine of half of theta and, and cosine of half of theta. Well, I've got those. They're sitting right here. So I'm going to take this part right here, substitute the blue part, and then guess what I'm going to do? No, I'm literally going to multiply. So I got the square root of AB on the bottom times the square root of AB on the bottom. That gives me? Or or AB squared. No, square root of AB squared, which is, just which is plain old AB, right? So on the bottom, I'm going to get just plain old AB. But on the top, there ain't nothing I can do. So I'm going to get the square root of an S minus A times S minus B times S minus C times S. Hold on. I'm supposed to be making this easier. I am. So when you multiply these two together, the bottom square roots drop away because there's two of them. But we're almost done. There's your formula. Hey, don't we have to read Do we have any trig? But what was S? Do you remember way yeah. back when? Yeah. Plus B plus Why B. are we allowed to do a U substitution? I said because you can if you want to. But we have to remember what S's are. We know what A, B, and C are. A, B, and C are these three values. S, S, S. What was our S, our U substitution? Although it's an S substitution. Our S substitution was also A, B, and C. It was A plus B plus C. Take a half of it. So I now have a formula. Okay, it's not the prettiest of things, but I now have a formula with a square root, which is no big deal. And I have nothing but side lengths, which is why this was called SSS. All right, so there's your proof. Thank you for putting up with that. That proof was worthy of, well, I'll let you fill in the blank. Nothing. All right, yeah. so write that down. Do you remember this from last year? This is called, it was, it was, Rediscovered in like the mid 1800s from a, an old Greek textbook. A guy named uh, Hero uh, was the ancient Greek guy. Sometimes it's called Heron. Yeah. Um, oh, no, 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 no. If you didn't have this, you would have to do a whole bunch of trig to find the area of a triangle. Now you can, and by the way, this isn't restricted to oblique triangles. It's, it's any triangle. You can do this to any triangle. You just got to have a triangle with side lengths A, B, and C. Guess what? You're always going to have a triangle of side lengths A, B, and C. Why don't they show this to fifth graders? This is better than one half base times height because you have to be handed the height. That's an arbitrary thing. Nobody calculates the height when they give you a triangle. I mean, that's a dotted line. It's an imaginary line somebody draws. In fifth grade, they tell you what the height is because it makes it easy. I don't need any heights. I just need the three sides. You're always going to have the three sides of a triangle. Right, if you make a triangle, yeah, Do we need to know that S is one half. Two. Yes, ma'am. But I will say this this is a pretty this is you can do this whole thing in your head once you figure out what S is because it's just S minus A, S minus B, S minus C times S, and then take the square root. They're just going to be friendly numbers, right? Unless they give you decimal sign. Or square roots are weird things. But if they give you integer size, which is what most triangles are that we are we deal with in the real world, <coughs> then it's really straightforward. Okay. Are you in full panic mode? Uh, no, this is just not. When I woke up this morning, I didn't, didn't think this was gonna happen. I didn't think, oh, I want to grow up so I can just draw triangles. That is not what I thought this morning. Okay. All right, everybody good? All right. Uh, the key is, is you remember what S is. The, the actual thing is pretty straightforward. We're not going to do 26 of these. You only need to do a couple of those. Hey, in order to use SSS, you must have the three sides, four, fives, and sevens. Okay. What are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to throw it into that formula. doesn't really matter which one you calculate first, but I always do S first. So how do you calculate S? You add up all these numbers and divide by two. So add up all these numbers and divide by two. It's eight. It's eight. Right? If I add up all those numbers and divide by two, I get eight. So everywhere you see an S, you write eight. 
And by the way, it doesn't matter the order. You just need to know the three values. Okay, the formula says A, B, C, but they're all subtracted from S, which is eight. So you can write them in order you want. <clears throat> so it's eight minus four, eight minus five, eight minus seven. And then what, if you make a mistake other than a normal math error is that you forget there's one extra S times eight. Eight minus four is four. Eight minus five is three. Eight minus seven is one. So it's four times three times one. So it's 12 times eight, which is 96. So it's the square root of 96. Any perfect squares in 96? 16 times six is 96. So it's four root six. The square units. And there's your homework right there. Tonight for homework, they're either going to give you SAS or they're going to give you SSS. If they give you SSS, no, you're not doing the proof, right? All that hard work. And I'm just saying, mathematicians are pretty dang smart, right? And by the way, the guy figured this out before he even had paper to write on, well, parchment, right? But no coordinate plane, right? We use the coordinate plane, put it in quadrant one. And he figured all this out, you know, and it's a pretty impressive feat. Is that his job? Uh, you you have probably seen him. He's most one of the things he's most famous for is if you've ever if you're somewhat of a nerd and stuff, you might have seen this thing where they have this um, fire, and above the fire is like a sphere, and out of the sphere are two tubes. One face is up and one face is down, and in the sphere you pour water, and so it heats up the sphere, and the water turns to steam and the, the tubes are facing in opposite directions so it spins the spins the the sphere i forget what it's called but that's that's also what he's famous for i'm sure he's famous for a lot more but those are the whenever you see this thing and it's called heroes something or other here on some okay do another one ugly numbers okay we got to add divide by two uh 35 and 37 is 72 Plus 12, 84, half of 84. So 42 is your S. So it's going to be 42 minus 12, which is 30. 42 minus 35, which is 7. 42 minus 37, which is, did I say 7 or did I say 5? 7, okay. And then the last one's a 5. Yeah, thank God for calculus. Do you agree you get a number? All right, doing this by hand. We don't have Cammy's calculator. You're on, go. Two. Two is not a perfect square. Four. Four? Well, 10 is not a perfect square. Well, no. 100, right? We could start with four, but I'm going with 100. Yeah. So that would be 100, sorry, 100 times. It's 440. What? what? Four, four, one, zero, zero is 100 times. Add two zeros oh. to that, right? Oh, uh, okay. Well, clearly that's 10. The question is, is there a perfect square in 441? Seven. Seven's not a perfect square. <laughs> right. Well, what are your options? Probably a better option is to you go can, back in here and if there are any perfect squares in here, in fact, I'm out. is divisible by two. That's not a perfect square. Right, but I'm saying. Okay. Oh, so maybe consider nine? Yeah, okay. It's 49, which is also yeah. a perfect seven, square. Ten. All right, so seven. Two ten. Because it's 100 and then it's nine. <laughs> seven. All right. So it's three times seven times 10. Mm -hmm. But remember, they have to be perfect squares. Right, but I'm saying once you pull those out of the. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Good? Sure. Okay. Uh, I think I assigned you an application as well, too. All right. We did a couple of very challenging applications. This one is not challenging. Okay. Uh, for those of you that play baseball, softball, the home plate uh, is shown as follows. It says, what is the area of home plate? Okay. Do you know? Uh, uh, do we have a formula for a pentagon other than what we learned in geometry? And the only formula we had was for area of a regular pentagon. So what do you want me to draw? 
Which way? Uh, horizontal. Horizontal line like that? You did not just okay. vertical. Well, if you draw a vertical line, then we have potentially two trapezoids, right? But if we don't have a formula for every trapezoid except for the one that we have from geometry, right? Okay, uh, now I have a triangle and a rectangle. Well, I guess this assumes that you know the formula for every rectangle, base times height or length times width. And now we have, wait, oh, we have two sides. Oh, because it's a rectangle, therefore that's 17. Could you take it from there? No. Well, no. Elena says no, but for the rest of you, could you take it from there? Yeah. All right. So it'll be the rectangle plus the triangle area. The rectangle's at SSS. So I got to do 17 times 12 times 12. So 144 times 17 divided by 2. It's not going to be a friendly number, right? But with a calculator, this is not that big of a deal. Okay, big of a deal to write it, but it's not a big deal to actually uh, plug it into your calculator. So it turns out it's semi trivia when you're on Jeopardy. Uh, I shouldn't say units because they gave me inches. So this is 72 square inches. Yes, no, maybe? Okay. Uh, finishing a little bit early. Yes. Yeah, I was hoping somebody wasn't going to ask that question. That's the best question right there. Wait, Todd, you made a big assumption, Mr. C, that this is a rectangle, okay. right? Agreed. No, it looks like a rectangle, so that's good enough. Good enough for Luke. It looks like a rectangle. Yeah, don't make assumptions. <clears throat> or if you're on a math test, you're like, can I assume that this is a rectangle? Yes. So you do is the final answer or just the triangle? No, no that's just the triangle. So I have to add that to 17 times 8, 8.5, right. So it turns out the final answer, the true trivia question, 216.5 square inches. Why am I not only noticing that now? Okay, finishing a little bit earlier today. There was nothing challenging today other than the proof and the one proof. The first proof was easy. Even Elena liked it. I I don't know about that. Okay. All right. Recorded for posterity. All right, Chloe, if you have any questions, get with me.